Hey guys, it's Adam. Uh, today, my morning watch was pretty uneventful, so I reset, got all my stuff together, uh, warmed up a little bit. It was cooler this morning. It's really warmed up a lot, actually. Uh, I'm sweating just standing here in a regular long sleeve Under Armour shirt. But um, I'm going to be really aggressive with my hunt tonight, uh, and I'll tell you why. What I did is during my lunch hour, right behind the house, there's a, a very deep gorge. Uh, there's a small stream, a small brook that runs through it, and um, it's loaded with oak trees. And there's a lot of acorns this year, as many of you know. Um, so what I've decided to do is I'm going to sneak into this spot. I walked through it earlier, um, and this is why I consider it to be an aggressive move, is because when I was walking through it, I jumped six deer out of there. Um, four of them were definitely does, and I think the other two were bucks. I know one of them was because I could see it had a small little rack on it, maybe a year and a half old deer. But the other one had a much larger body on it, but I never got a chance to see the head. It was too thick in the spot that it was in. Um, the two bucks weren't really spooked. They knew that there was something there, but I don't think they knew what. They just made a couple bounds, and then they just stood there in the thick stuff looking for the source of the noise, and I just waited them out, and then I snuck out real quiet. The does, I'm pretty sure that they ran across, uh, we have a road right here, I think they ran across that road, but the amount of sign that I saw underneath those oak trees um, really leads me to believe that those deer may make their way back. It was, you know, around noontime, so there's a lot of time for those deer to come back into that area. Um, so I'm going to actually, even though I jumped deer in there tonight, I'm going to make the move, I'm going to go sit in there. Hopefully they'll come back and uh, hopefully enough time, you know, will go by that my scent along those trails that I walked in, in on down there uh, dissipates. But um, the wind is coming primarily out of the southeast today, uh, which is not great, but it's definitely doable with this stand, especially if the deer come from the south, uh, which I expect the does to do. The bucks may be closer to that south, that southeast corner, but... I still think I'll be okay with where I'm at. Um, so I'm going to do the interview here just so you guys uh, can know a little bit about what I'm doing tonight. I don't want to be talking when I get back there because it's super close proximity to the to the beds that these deer were in. Only maybe 50, 60 yards away, but it's just so thick that it's, you know, it's tough for them to, to see you. So stick with me guys and let's see if we can make this happen tonight.
Hey guys, it's Adam. Uh, today is Sunday, October 26th, and uh, last night I believe that I zeroed in on a, a pocket of deer here um, out of our entire property. Most people would look at this spot and think that it's really uh, not a spot that you would expect to, to shoot a deer. Um, and last night I got really aggressive and I sat this spot and I had a really close opportunity with a really nice mature doe. Um, we did see a big body deer in there and we're pretty sure it's a buck. We don't know how big its rack is but I'm hoping to uh, maybe get a look at it tonight. I completely stayed out of the area today. Um, I'm only coming in for the evening hunt. Uh, what we've got for weather conditions today is it's about uh, 45, 50 degrees. The wind is again blowing south, southeast, and uh, it's ranging anywhere from 5 to 15 miles an hour, so it's, it's not too bad. Yesterday it was a lot windier right now than it is today, so I'm here a little bit extra early. I was able to successfully get into my stand uh, really quietly last night, and these deer uh, typically are bedded anywhere from 100 to 50 yards from the stand, so it's uh, close proximity. I'm going to, again, do my interview here at the truck. I don't want to do a lot of talking in the tree. Um, i got to be as quiet as I can, but I took a lot of extra scent precautions today. Um, I'm not wearing any of my hunting clothes to uh, the location tonight. I'm going to get dressed right here at the truck and then walk up. Um, so I did everything by the book today. I'm really hoping that it pays off. So stay tuned, guys, and let's see what happens tonight. Well, guys, I'm in the middle of getting ready. And we had a little squall come over, and right now it's uh, sleeting. A little bit of mixture of rain in it, so I took cover here in the barn, and I'm going to wait it out. I'm going to pack up my umbrella. This wasn't even in the forecast for today, so I'm hoping that, and I'm pretty sure it's going to pass. It doesn't seem like it's real heavy, so I'm just going to stick it out here and uh, get going in a little bit. Well guys, another doe tag filled. Man, I was not expecting that. I was watching this button buck who's been up behind me 
for, uh, I don't know, about 45 minutes now just feeding. And I wasn't really paying attention. And I heard some commotion down here to my left. And uh, I looked down and I saw a doe and a yearling fawn. And they walked up past this first shooting lane that I have right here. I looked down, another doe, another doe, and then two more does after that. There was a total of, uh, I don't know, from what I saw, there was a total of six or seven deer, all does, except for the, the button buck. So I just put an arrow through a nice, mature, healthy doe. Um, I made an awful mistake. I had my camera pointed right where I was gonna shoot and I forgot to hit record. <sighs> that's that's pretty frustrating because I passed up a deer last night so that um, I could get it better on film. But I know for a fact I had my GoPro on. The deer was only 15 yards away so hopefully it looks good on camera. The shot was perfect. Uh, I don't think it was a pass through. I think it went in and hit her offside shoulder. So, but she only ran 10 feet and I could already see the blood pouring out, out the side of her, so she's down. I'm going to, uh, it's gonna take me a while to get everything packed up here and then it'll be plenty of time to let her expire. So I'm gonna pack up my things. I'm gonna go find her and uh, stay tuned guys. More meat for the freezer. All right guys, well, this is where she was standing. When I took the shot, and there's already some blood right here. Um, I'm pretty sure that she didn't make it very far because she was bleeding pretty good from my, uh, from my perspective up in the tree stand. So I'm almost going to say it's safe to bet that once we get out here in the field, we're gonna look down along the edge and she's gonna be laying there. So uh, let's uh, get tracking and get this deer. Hopefully she's dead. Let's get her gutted out and over to the deer processor for today. She is right there. All right, awesome. There's good, uh, good blood right here where she just ran into the field, and I can actually visibly see this blood trail going the length down. Actually, my arrow's right there too. It's about 30 yards away from me right now, and the deer's probably a total of 75 yards maybe from right here. So once again. Looks like uh, it was a pretty decent shot. And we're gonna go get this recovery process started. So stay tuned guys. Well guys, looks like another successful hunt here tonight. Um, this is a really nice mature adult doe. She's gonna go, uh, help fill the rest of the freezer. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean that nap kill zone did a number on her once again. Great job by that broadhead, absolutely love it. Uh, my first year switching over to it and I can't say enough good things about it. But you know, this, uh, this doe kind of concludes a point that I've been trying to make for the past couple of episodes which is really you know don't be afraid to go out and hunt the spots that would normally kind of see out of, out of place like where you normally wouldn't expect to, to shoot a deer the spot that I shot this deer tonight is in an area that is right behind my house it's only maybe a hundred yards or so from the back door um, and 
I've been hunting all over the property. Deer numbers really haven't been been very high. But uh, what happened tonight was I decided to sit this stand. Last night I had an opportunity to doe, but I couldn't get her on camera. Tonight I sat the same stand again because of the sign that I saw when I walked through there the other day. And just based on that alone, you know, I decided whether or not it's that close to the house and whether or not it's a really difficult spot to hunt because it is a bedding area. It's really tough to get into a stand without spooking deer. It's only about an acre in size. Um, I decided to sit that stand and at about 4.30, um, I heard some noise off to my left. I was watching a button buck that was feeding out in the field. I looked down and there was uh, two really nice deer standing there, another mature doe and a yearling. Um, and they walked up in my shooting lane, which get, offers me a 15 yard shot. Um, shortly after that, this doe walked up uh, in third, you know, third in line, um, right behind the other two deer, and I stopped her in, the, in the, the shooting lane and took a shot. And honestly, I couldn't be happier, but, you know, the important thing to remember was right behind this doe were four more deer. There were seven deer total, including the deer out in the, the field. It was eight, and there was two more in the brush behind those deer that I couldn't see, but I could hear them walking. Um, but you know this this doe is all battle torn. She's got splits in her ears. Um, I have trail cam pictures of this doe uh, from this summer, so I know that this is her. She's been a resident here on the property for quite some time, but she's got a real nice long snout on her. Um, she's definitely definitely going to have a lot of meat on her. But you know I got to say again, guys, don't be afraid to get out there and hunt places that you normally would pass by, thinking that the further back you go, the better it's going to be, because that's not always the case but alright well uh, stay tuned guys and hopefully uh, we'll have another kill for you on our next episode